there's fascinating when I look at what's happening here as we see in that tree right up there that's starting to turn green as I look at this beautiful natural scene that's all around us here and it's gorgeous and it reminds me of just how much God is in this creation and that is a good segue into what we're going to talk about next and that concerns how God reveals himself to mankind. We've already mentioned that it's been difficult for Muslims to find uh, or to, for Muslims to really defend how is it that Allah, if he's so distant, so other, never enters time and space, how does he get his revelation down to earth? So we're going to look at those forms of how God actually reveals himself. And in Christianity, we have four forms of revelation what we call general revelation, secondly would be special revelation, third would be personal revelation, and fourth would be ongoing revelation. But this video we want to just talk about the first one, general revelation, because this Islam does share with Christianity. And general revelation is what I've just introduced this video with, and that is when you look at the sophistication, how is it that all these trees around me, they all seem to die, they're not dead. They looked at and earlier there was no green on any of them now the green is starting to come back and they always come back at this time of year and proving that they've always been alive they just go dormant for the winter lose all their leaves and then regain them in the springtime this sophistication that we see just in something as intrinsic as green leaves that come back every spring let me give you another example, probably even a better example. You, the monarch butterfly, you know the monarch butterfly? Here's a picture of it. We're going to put it on there, and you can see it. That's a very famous butterfly, and you see it all over this part of the world. And in fact, monarch butterflies you can find all the way up, in, up into Canada, way up north. But did you know that the monarch butterfly travels 2,500 miles, comes across the east coast of America, goes over across the southern parts of America, over Texas, and goes down to Mexico. And it goes to a specific tree forest called the Oyomel fir trees in southern Mexico. This one forest, millions of these butterflies travel 2,500 miles to go to that forest and lay their eggs in those trees every four years they do this and then those eggs are hatched and uh, they the, the parents then die off they don't they don't stay around they die and the little new larva then move uh, grow into caterpillars which then turn into monarch butterflies themselves and then they fly back up and retrace the steps of their parents, having never got a map, having no uh, type of teaching on where they're to go. They always know where to go. 2,500 miles, they then retrace the steps of their parents who are long dead. And yet look at their heads, just itsy bitsy little things. How are they able to do that? Well, see, that's the sophistication that we see in nature that we cannot explain today. There's no way anybody can explain that. There's no way that any other of us have that type of direction, navigation in our heads, and yet monarch butterflies do have that. And so that's why it's beautiful when you look at the nature that you see around here that suggests that there is a designer, that there is a designer. When you look at my hand, look at my hand. Every time I do this motion, opening and closing my hand, there are 60 muscles that are required to do just this. Yet most of the muscles you would think should be right around here where the hand is opening and closing. They're not. Most of the muscles are down here in the bottom part of the arm. This is where most of the action takes place to open and close my hand. Who would have designed that? Even engineers today can't do that. And yet that shows that there's a designer. That shows that there's something much more sophisticated than this just all happening by chance. And to me, that proves that that designer has to be God. And that's what we call general revelation. You can't help but see that there's a designer behind this beautiful design all around us, the sophistication that's in that. General revelation is spoken specifically in the Bible. I want to open up the Bible and let's open up to Romans chapter 1, verse 20. In Romans chapter 1, verse 20, Paul talks about that. He says, 
In verse 24, since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. Since the very beginning, this beautiful revelation of God, this beautiful design is always there. There is no excuse for any of us if you look at the gorgeous things that are happening right here and what I've just talked about, the monarch butterflies and something as easy as opening a uh, sophisticated as opening and closing a hand. See, that Islam does understand, although there's no verse in the Quran that speaks about that. And I've always asked Muslims, where do you get general revelation here? Oh, I know you assume it and it's there, but it just talks about, you all go on and go on and on and on about scientific proofs in the Quran. <laughs> We're gonna do a whole series just on say, science, supposed scientific proofs. You're gonna find not one of them are scientific proofs. In fact, just the opposite. They destroy the credibility of the Quran once you unpack them. But I don't see any reference like we have in Romans chapter one, verse 20. If any of you can come up with it, Put it in the comments below. I'd like to see if you can come up with this kind of reference point in the Quran. It just doesn't exist. General revelation is one thing we do share in common. But if God is, Allah is totally other and he can't enter time and space, then he needs helpers. And that moves us into the second form of revelation, which we're gonna pick up next. Special revelation. Hold on, we'll unpack every one of these four. General revelation we can agree on with Islam, but, but I don't see it anywhere in the Quran. Special revelation I do, and we're gonna get to that because that's something we do share in common. But then there are two more. There are two more that we've got to unpack, and that Muslims have no answer for. God bless you, it's just a gorgeous day, isn't it? <laughs> I wish you could be sharing it with me. Maybe you are in your own locales. Okay, this is Jay here, next to one of my favorite streets.